When World War II started, many pilots were needed for the war, but were also needed back home doing normal jobs like being transport pilots or workers. Eventually, the need to fill these positions was too great, so the government finally asked for women to fill in the empty spaces where before only men were welcome. These women were known as the Women's Air Force Service Pilots, or WASPs. The WASPs of 1943 were transport pilots that took military planes from factories to Air Force airfields. The WASPs never got military benefits, but they worked for the Air Force, a first woman. By the end, the WASPs logged more than 60 million miles of flight time. Through their work, they paved the way for women's rights in the military. In 1977, a law was passed allowing women to have rights in the Air Force, a barrier since its establishment. Today, because of groups like the WASPs, other women have more opportunities to get better occupations in the military. In the United States, there was a need for pilots to ship goods to soldiers or just transport planes from factories. The U.S. government did not agree at first the idea of the women pilots, but when they finally realized they were short on male pilots in the war, they came to the conclusion that they should give women pilots a shot. Women joined the program to help in the war effort and hopefully show that women could do just as much as men. The WAFs formed from two routes that merged in August 1943. First was the Women's Auxiliary Fairing Squadron, or the WAFs, approved in September 1942, founded by Nancy Love. To become a WAFs member, you required to have a five minute hour flying time and a 200 horsepower rating. The WAFs also came from the Women's Flying Training Detachment and the WFTDs, founded by Jacqueline Cochran. Little more than 1,830 of the more than 25,000 women who applied for the WASP organization in World War II made the cut. Almost all of those chosen were already qualified civilian pilots, and their mission was also to operate U.S. Army Air Forces, USAAF aircraft, and non-combat roles, thus bringing male pilots for frontline duty. The pilots who got into the new flying program were so excited to be a part of something that would help the worker. When writing to her sister, one of the WASP members said, I am so happy to be here, and I can hardly realize that I'm actually a part of this marvelous new program. It was a real thrill when I first saw these tremendous airfields and huge hangars and beautiful planes in the air. My heart simply started to pound. During a six-week training course, the women who were trained and taught how to identify an aircraft. They were educated in meteorology, navigation, medical training, seamanship, woodsmanship, airplane, and engine maintenance. They were also taught how to fill out the reports used in the Air Force and how to send and receive Morse code. If they did not pass this training course, they would not become a WASP member. The WASP had many jobs flying a wide variety of USAAF aircraft and toys. They also had many other jobs including flying aircraft to factory to bases. The WASP took over tow target and tracking missions. These jobs were considered to be a couple of the most difficult jobs for a pilot in the Air Force. Towards the end of the war, I was given an assignment to ferry a B-29 to a base on the west coast. Now, the B-29 was a huge four-engine plane, the largest plane to fly in the war, said Miss Starr, one of the many WASP women. This is an example of the difficult missions and jobs they had to do. They towed dummy aircraft doing laboratory training, taught its flight instructors, and tested new planes. They were very crucial to the victory of World War II. They would turn planes crippled from the battlefields for repairs. This was not the easiest job because they are at a risk of fear that they might not come back. There was always a risk of being shot down, though it was not very likely bullet holes turned up in some of the tow planes flown by women at Camp Davis in North Carolina during grounded gunnery practice. Many of the planes were in no condition to fly, altimeters that didn't work, inaccurate compasses, 500 hours flying time since the last engine maintenance check, said Andar. In this role, they flew every type of military aircraft. There were many successes in the time of flight, but there were also numerous deaths. 38 WASPs died while on missions or doing practice navigation. The losses were extraordinary, and the military government did not bring it upon themselves to pay for the funeral costs. Fellow members had to chip in to pay for the funeral. The government didn't even pay for a way to get the bodies to the families. King Love Fort was one of the first women to die flying in the service of her country. On a Ferrying flight mission in 1943, Fort died when another aircraft struck the nose. There were many famous flyers that were a part of the WASP women, such as Jacqueline Cochran, Nancy Love, and Cornelia Fort. These women were very important to the success of the WASP women and the victory of World War II. 
Jacqueline Cochran was very accomplished in her lifetime as she founded the WASP, the WFTDs, and helped fly all the planes that helped win World War II. She broke many records for women and really showed what women can do when they put their minds to it. Jacqueline Cochran played a major role in the success of the WASP women by training and teaching. Next is Cornelia Fort, who was a very experienced flyer from Nashville, Tennessee, and when she died, she tragically became the first female death in the U.S. Air Force. The surprising unexpected fact about the accident and fatal crash was the pilot was a woman. Her name was Cornelia Ford, the first female pilot to die active duty in the military and the first Tennessee woman to die in World War II. The next person that was a famous flyer in the WASP was Nancy Harkness Love. She, Love was a very experienced flyer and became the first female pilot in the U.S. Air Force on September 7, 1942. Love got her pilot license when she was only 16, showing her passion for flying. She was also the founder of the Women Auxiliary Fairing Squadron, WAFs, in September 1942. She became the co-leader of the Air Transport Command in August 1943, and she was in charge of six fairing squadrons and over 300 women pilots. As World War II neared, enough male pilots had come back from war to take the jobs back, so General Harp Arnold disbanded and deactivated the WASP program in December 1944. I was sent to a base for twin engine training because I was supposed to fly a B-26 Mardar medium bombers in the tow target role. I got the notice the program was being disbanded, and two weeks later I got the notice that was being transferred to Palma City, Florida. I thought I had just got down there and have to turn around and come back home again. So I resigned, said one of the WASP women. Most of the women who've been WASP had no occupations after the group had disbanded. When the WASP disbanded, their records were sealed and classified. This greatly reduced the acknowledgement of the WASP. When the military let women into the Air Force as pilots, no one even knew of the WASP until they came out and told their story to the world. When the first disbanded, they got no recognition for what they had done in the war. They were not even spoken of until years later. The WASP did much to contribute to the success of World War II, but there were many barriers they faced along the way. For example, most men did not support them, and the government did not allow them to have military burial rights. Eleanor Roosevelt said, This is not a time when women should be patient. We are in the war, and we need to fight it with all our abilities and every weapon possible. Women pilots in these particular cases are a weapon waiting to be used. Women were needed in the war, but men were holding them back because they disapproved of women filling in the spots in their various jobs. They also had to overcome the obstacle of fear. Their fear was indeed great because they were being judged for wanting to fly. Even though they had many barriers, they overcame these through courage, hope, and bravery. General Hap Arnold, one of the few WASP supporters, said, Now, in 1944, it is on the record that women can fly as well as men. The WASP made a huge impact on World War II. They ferried around 50% of the planes used by Americans. The WASP also helped women break into the military, and they helped men see that women should be treated as equals. In the end, the WASP impacted many lives and the steps that they took to stand up and fight for women's rights. They were also part of the reason women were allowed in higher ranks in the Air Force. The WASP service to our nation at a critical time in the history of the entire free world is not remarkable because they are women, but it is remarkable in its own right. Their legacy to all military avatars, women and the men alike, is the knowledge and perseverance, commit and the desire to serve can overcome tremendous obstacles. I know I was able to be a women fighter pilot and a women Thunderbird pilot because of the wasp. In 1977, the law was passed that allowed women to be pilots in the Air Force. Although people said that these women would be the first to fly planes for the military, they were wrong. This attitude made the wasps come out and seek the recognition they deserved. When people learned of their part in World War II, Jimmy Carter passed the law, giving the wasps better than status, and limited their benefits. They were given the World War II Victory Medals and American Theater Campaign Medals in 1984. Later, in 2009, President Obama gave them Congressional Gold Medals.